all three of my vehicles are literally broken. Shit ain't got activated. Saw the money ain't got activated. Saw the money ain't got activated. Saw that money ain't got activated. I saw that money ain't got activated. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, today is a little bit. Uh, I shouldn't say different video because we're always working on something, but all three of my vehicles are literally broken. Now, not so much anymore. Well, technically, so the BMW, uh, I was driving it two days ago and the wheel like all of a sudden like was crooked. I didn't, hit any, I didn't like hit anything in the road or I like, it just all of a sudden randomly was crooked and I noticed the tires were like chirping when like going around corners and stuff so I'm like okay maybe the control arm because the it's a brand new control arm and it has camera adjustment so like it's not unlikely for it to like rattle loose or something because it doesn't have locking washers that come on or anything so I was like okay well maybe just one of the camera arms uh, could have possibly like vibrated loose and it messed with the camera adjustment so I parked it and then just a second ago I went out there to check it out and everything was tight so I'm assuming because it has a toe adjustment and it's hard to get those bolts tight because it's like a weird socket style. So my guess is the toe is out again so I'm going to wait and uh, mess with that this weekend um, and try to like actually measure it out like I did with uh, the trucks. Um, and then the Cummins, which we've been driving for the last couple days, as just like kind of a band-aid. Uh, the Cummins has been pouring power steering fluid, and I can't figure out where from. It's the weirdest thing. Like I even climbed under the truck for like 30 minutes and just watched it drip, and I cannot figure out where it's coming from. Like I think there honestly has to be a crack inside the res on the reservoir, because like it just comes from nowhere. Like it does. It's it's not a high pressure leak because it sits overnight and it leaks. Like all these leaks, all these spots right here are from Cummins. It leaks like a whole like quart, a quart and a half, like just sitting. So I think there's got to be a crack in the pump or something. Um, so there's that issue with that. And then another thing is, uh, I've been, I've talked about this in videos before, but I've been fighting battles with the rear end keeps breaking, like getting itself loose. So the axle shifts around and. It's been acting finicky lately, and then today on my way home, I like got on it, and it like tracked weird, and then I let out, and the truck like literally changed lanes by itself. So it's time to assess that. Um, I'm gonna have to get factory U bolts, and then try to figure out a way to keep the axle from swing. Honestly, think I'm gonna need to get track bars. Um, the truck probably makes gob loads of torque. Um, so it, I think that could possibly play into why it keeps shifting um, and then partially those cheap U-bolts I have. So I think I'm going to try to fix it with the U-bolts and then start trying to fabricate up a set of track bars for it. Um, not really a fan of track bars because you have all the fanboy diesel guys that just buy track bars and put them on their trucks to look cool. Um, and not really understanding the purpose of what a track bar is supposed to do and like half the time these people literally will just like Not even articulately like Mount a set of track bars. They'll just put them on because it makes it look fast or it's cool or whatever So I've like always been kind of opposed to track bars and like was never gonna get track bars unless I needed them um, And the truck doesn't axle hop or anything like that. It just uh, I just I think that's the only way I can prevent it from moving around so much and it'll give me a little bit of an axle adjustment um, I'm gonna try my hardest to prevent having to put track bars on it but uh we'll see and then the hard body so the hard body is a trooper this thing just runs and runs and runs and I could probably keep driving it but it's been leaking gear oil uh, from the ends of the axles so my guess is the axle seals and me being the dummy I am when I was rushing and putting it back together, I don't remember cleaning the race and everything where all the where the spline or the axles meet 
the seal and where the grease at, uh, where the grease gaskets are at. I didn't clean any of that off. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the axles out and replace the axle seals and put some good fluid in it because I did want to flush the fluid out anyways. Uh, put some good fluid in it. And I think we're also going to take the leaf pack apart and flip the two overload springs. So these two big guys right here, I'm going to flip those on top. Um, cause I guess that supposedly stiffens up the suspension. Another thing that I'm working on right now is trying to figure out a way to make the rear end not sway so much. Yes, I know you can buy sway bars, um, but they're like $350 and I just can't see myself spending that kind of money like on a sway bar. I feel like there's a way better option than mounting a sway bar on the back. Um, I feel like there's suspension travel limiters I could put on there and whatever else call me cheap but i feel like i would rather build or fabricate something to do the same thing than spend 350 dollars eventually yes but i don't know i i don't know i just like i just like to experiment with it kind of um if it comes down to it i'll buy the the whole belltech uh full suspension kit for it since it does need shocks but i kind of want to play with it i have a couple ideas in mind um as far as that goes so that needs fixed and then it still has a sticky caliper even after I put brakes on it. As you can see, it has new pads because the rims are literally turning black. Um, so, got to figure out the sticky caliper situation. And then we have still yet to install our hydro brake. Um, I think while I have this stuff apart, I'm going to start trying to get an idea of what I need to do that. Um, I will have to weld up a bracket for it, which... Um, I don't know where the oh, so this is kind of what I'm thinking here. So this would be the mounting bracket. This would get it up high enough. Not even sure if it needs to sit that high or if we even need this at all. But I'm trying to prevent drilling holes and bolting anything together because I don't want anything to come loose. So I'm trying to weld everything I can. So because this is you know I'm going to be yanking on this thing, so I want it to be as strong as it can be. So, uh, yeah, so that's just a really, really quick update. Um, no cuts, no clips, and yeah, this is the first time I think all three of my vehicles have been like somewhat not drivable. But um, I'm not going to bore you guys with the uh, time lapse or anything like that. You guys have seen me pull this rear end apart plenty of times, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and yank that stuff apart and catch up with you guys in a minute. Okay, this is a continuation from yesterday. Just now about to pull the axle lens out of the hard body. Um, I've already pulled this rear end apart like three times on video, so I'm not gonna like put it on time lapse or anything. I'm just gonna pull it apart and then let you know. I have a bad feeling that the guy at AutoZone was a retard and gave me the wrong axle uh, seals. So we're gonna see. Uh, my wallet is somewhere else because somebody forgot it and I gotta go get it that and it's like 30 minutes away So me and Trey I'm gonna pull this up apart real quick um, And then Make sure we have the right axle shafts because where we're going there's a hub store that's 24 hours So we can get parts if we need it And yeah, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Hopefully it shouldn't take long because you know junk right What's up guys, so we got the axle out um, and got the axle seal out. The axle is, the axle seal they gave me is not as wide, but I don't think it really makes a difference. It seals the same way and everything else, so I don't see how it would make a difference. I don't think it would. Um, if anything, it just won't cover, yeah, it shouldn't make a difference. It really shouldn't because it's, the seal itself is just as wide, I'm pretty sure. So it's just the actual collar that slips in is a little wider than the, that one. Hang on, let's see. Uh, I guess that seal's a little wider, but... I think we'll just send it and see what happens. They're only five bucks a piece, so screw it. We'll put these in on this side, and then I kind of want to take the leaf pack apart 
and flip the overload springs on top. I think I already said that once, but uh, I definitely think I want to do that. So, yeah. So I'm just going to clean this race up a little bit and clean the uh, that whole race up uh, with like some steel wool. And then to get this sealant, I'm just going to use this socket and it fits perfectly inside it. And I'll just tap it in with a hammer and it should, should get the job done. I guess we'll find out. Not 100% sure where I left off in the last clip. This video is kind of all over the place because I started filming it on Friday and things got a little hectic and just wasn't feeling well yesterday so I'm kind of like I don't know sometimes I just get in these random moods where like I just feel extremely unmotivated I think it's because I overwork myself but we're back out here today that's all that matters uh, so I'm not sure if I showed the hard body yet or not but the hard body I finished up on the uh, leaf flip so we put the overload springs on top and it actually dropped the truck quite a bit um, I want to say it dropped it like a solid two inches in the rear now the truck actually sits level front to back as far as wheel gap goes um and but we ran into a problem where the u-bolts weren't long enough on this side for some reason the other side fits this side did not so we're going to mess with that a little bit and try to get that figured out um we did try to charge the ac uh yesterday and it got cold but i found a leak um, I can't really see anything right now, but there's the main hose that goes down to the uh, compressor with the low side port. Um, it started spewing Freon out. I think it might be just the O-ring where it adapts to the compressor, or it could be the hose. I'm not 100% sure. I'll probably pull that off maybe today and check that out. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's really it with the hard body right now uh, we did replace the axle seals and fill it with diff fluid um, the brakes still need bled which I need help with and it's kinda hard to get help over here um, during the week but uh and then the Cummins I have the power steering pump seal kit and I haven't done it yet um, so that's pretty much that with this thing and then the BMW we never did the alignment on it and I just measured and it looks like it's a half inch out and it's towed out a half inch. Uh, so now I have to decipher on which side is towed out. Um, technically I could just tow each side in a quarter inch. But that wouldn't guarantee that the car drives straight. Because if it still has some tow out on uh, one of the sides it would uh, still drive crooked. Um, I guess maybe I didn't touch on the fact that the BMW was aligned. You guys watched me line in that one video. But the other day, it randomly uh, went out of alignment. Um, it didn't really hit any hard bumps or anything. I'm thinking the uh, tow bolt maybe just wasn't tight enough. And just a little bump uh, just kind of bumped it out uh, of tow. It's not very hard because um, it's just like an eccentric bolt. And the way that they're kind of bolted up. Um, I could see it being pretty easy for it to get knocked out. So we got those three things to take care of. Uh, the BMW obviously comes first because that's the daily. Um, the Cummins. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to work on this one. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. 100%. I would like to start driving this thing though, I kind of miss it, and I, I guess uh, this thing is going to be a cop magnet though, I can tell you that. Trey got me hooked up with some new stickers from uh, Donnie, I believe, I don't know the actual vinyl company name, but the stickers came out dope. I actually got this sticker idea from Adam LZ, he has it on his 240, and I just love the sticker, so I threw it on there, and then got the Instagram name, might be a little hard to see, and then Trey just had to throw the sticker on the windshield so that's there and uh yeah so i think we're gonna try to line the bmw i'm not gonna like film a whole video thing on that because uh you guys have already saw me do that this video is pretty much just gonna be me trying to get all my vehicles back on the road so okay so i got the alignment figured out on the bmw <clears throat> it turns out when we did the uh, camber kit and lowered the car 
and put the uh, wheels on the in the one video and roll the fenders and stuff um, somehow the left hand side toe arm did not get completely tightened it wasn't like loose enough to fall like move around per se but I would say loose enough to definitely like if a bump a hard enough bump would definitely knock it out um, the only thing I can say is when you're doing so many things on a car in kind of a time crunch things like that happen you're gonna leave bolts loose you're gonna forget things it's just the nature of the beast um, it doesn't make you bad at doing something it's just one of those things that it's kind of a lesson learned to take your time that's one thing that I'm really bad about is I rush things because I get excited and that's when I forget stuff so it happens um, it's taken care of now should be good to go uh, I just need to put air in this this back right tire and then uh, I started taking the pump off the Cummins I already got the hose loose and the right hand side um, power steering bolt loose and then uh, I just gotta climb underneath it and crack the other one loose and should pour it out. And we'll see what's going on with that thing. I feel like there's a crack in the pump, so I'll catch up to you guys. So we got air on the BMW tire or whatever, and I remembered that we still had to do this. Uh, someone actually hit my car um, probably about a m couple weeks ago. Um, they hit it with the door of a truck. And it uh, put like a cre like a scratch about this long on it, right here. And then there's like two, like a small dent here and a small dent here. And then the scratches are a little worse here. Um, literally did it in my work parking lot with a work truck. I know who did it, and they still were. It was like a big ordeal because there was no proof. But I literally found the truck and found the blue paint on the truck, matched the door to the truck, to the side of the car, height and everything. Long story short, I'm, I'm pretty mad about it, but um, I got this kit that uh, you use this gun and you pretty much like, it's like hot glue, but a little stronger. And you hot glue this little piece to the, wherever the ding, where the ding's at. And then you have this little puller. So this would thread onto here and then you just keep pulling it out. Um, so we're gonna try that and see if we can get the ding out. Okay, so the BMW was having a couple issues with the uh, electrical side of things, so um, all being my fault actually. So when I left for vacation, I think I mentioned this, um, when I or not vacation, when I left to go out of town for work, I got in the car and I pulled my car charger port out. Well, when I did that, this black cord here, the USB part of it fell down inside the port and popped the fuse. And then, like, I never fixed it when I got back or whatever. And so, finally, I started looking through the fuses, which are back behind the glove box, uh, Saturday before we went out of town. And uh, was having a hard time finding the fuses, or the fuse for the cigarette lighter. Because stupid German cars, instead of labeling things, they put symbols that literally make no sense. So, it took forever. I kept pulling different fuses, trying to figure, find the right one. Long story short, we found it eventually, and then uh, randomly the um, sunroof wouldn't work, and then it was throwing like a weird code, and then it was doing some weird like four-wheel drive code and all this stuff. So I'm like, dude, what the heck? Like, there's no way there's something wrong with the car. It had to have been something to do with the fuses. So I started going through the fuses today, and it turns out there was one fuse up in the upper right corner that I did not push in all the way like it pushed in it looked like it pushed in but it was like slanted so I corrected that sunroof works now not sure if the four wheel drive stuff is still acting up um, but yeah so got that fixed so I'm super happy about that I was kind of worried for a sec and then uh, like I said got the alignment and stuff fixed on it so the BMW is done and we got oh I'll have to show you guys the dent that we fixed in the daylight and then we got the pump back in the Cummins. Got that all tidied up. So uh, we just gotta put fluid in it. Everything's already tight, just put fluid in it, make sure it doesn't leak anymore. And those two vehicles will be done. And then we just gotta mess with this, which we gotta figure out the U-bolt situation and then 
the brakes need bled and I highly doubt I'm going to be able to do them by myself so I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do with the hard body. I'd really like to fix it tonight because I want to get all of the cars out and drivable because I really want to go through the garage. I want to paint the floors. I want to clean everything in here and reorganize everything. Um, with winter coming up, uh, I'm going to be relying on this garage a lot to get stuff done. So uh, I really want to paint the walls white and paint the floors gray just to uh, brighten everything up in here. I want to add some more lights up there, um, just because this is this is something I'm in almost every day. So I'm in here more than I am in my bed or in my own bedroom, honestly. So uh, I definitely, definitely want to get this garage as nice as I can make it, <clears throat> just until we can uh, get a shop. So what's up, guys? A little bit of jump in time uh, since the last video. Um, there's actually my my, I pulled a muscle on my neck lifting something at work and uh, so if I look a little weird that's why um, but uh, so jump of time we got the um, hard body uh, this is pretty much up and going now and yeah that's all we're going to touch base on that we'll have another video here shortly more about the hard body and then we fixed the we fixed the power steering pump on the Cummins. Uh, let's see. Got this gal fixed up. It needs washed desperately. Like, look how dirty it is. So, I think we're going to drive this tomorrow. I might go wash it tonight after I edit all the videos. Probably be a late one tonight. Uh, and then the BMW, obviously, is fixed like I told you guys. But yeah, everything's, I just uh, completely resealed the power steering pump on the Cummins. Um, I actually didn't even need a the seal kit that I bought. So I gotta take that back yet. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. So I think that's gonna be it for this video. This video is pretty much just like trying to get all three of my vehicles back on the road. So just uh, keeping you guys up to, up to date and in the loop with what's going on. So. That'll be it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.